Count Dracula is the most famous vampire. His name has become a household name, and the image created in the late 19th century by Bram Stoker and played in countless films as a textbook incarnation of a vampire. A castle in the mountains of Transylvania, faithful human servants, a black cloak with a scarlet lining, three brides, the ability to turn into a bat. Like other celebrities, the Count and his prototype left many traces in different cities and countries. Everyone knows this, but we remember. The prototype of the vampire was Vlad III Basarab, nicknamed Dracula, the ruler of the medieval principality of Wallachia, the national hero of modern Europe. The Turks, with whom he fought all his life, affectionately called him Kazakli, that is, Kolschik, because of the method of impaling prisoners on a stake. In Romanian, it sounds like Tepish, and many mistakenly consider this to be Vlad's surname. But no one called him that to his face. Having heard such a call, Vlad, likely, would have immediately confirmed his reputation by impaling the ignoramus on a stake. But he would not be offended by Dracula, because this is a kind of patronymic. The father of the ruler was Vlad II, nicknamed Dracula, Dragon. So he himself began to be called Dracula. So, Draganovich and their descendants called themselves Draculsti. In the novel, Dracula, for a conspiracy, the Count claimed that Vlad was not himself, but his distant ancestor, but he praised not himself, very clearly. When the banners of the Wallachians and the Magyars bowed before the crescent. If not one of my ancestors, crossed the Danube and defeated the Turks on their own land. It really was Dracula. There was something, when his unworthy, burnt-out brother sold his people to the Turks, brought upon himself the shame of slavery. Wasn't he, this Dracu, inspired by another tribesman who in his later life again and again crossed the river with his army on Turkish soil? Who, growing up, got up again and again, although he returned alone with a bloody field of vision, where his army died. Both the places connected with the life of Vlad Tepes and the traces of the fictional count deserve attention. In any travel agency in the state, you are offered several routes. But I have developed my own. Vlad Basarab was born in 1431 in the fortified city of Syasora, by the way, at that time it was the only permanently inhabited fortress in Europe. The house where this happened is known, it is located in Syasora at Kazaterarelor. 5. On the corner of Museum Square, near the clock tower itself. Right in the center of the old town, which is under the protection of UNESCO. Of course, the house has been rebuilt since the 15th century. What we see now belongs to the 17th century. But something has survived from the time of Dracula. On the second floor there was a fresco depicting Vlad II and Princess Vasilisa, the parents of our hero. The house now has a restaurant serving traditional Romanian dishes as well as Dracula tomato soup, Bloody Mary, red syrup ice cream, and everything red. Let's move on to the mysterious castle of Dracula, where he allegedly lived until the 19th century. According to Bram Stoker, the castle stood in the Borgo Gorge, now Tihutsa Pass, at an altitude of 1,000 feet on a sheer cliff, around which there was a deep cliff that separated from it the mountains that surrounded it on all sides. In fact, two fortresses claimed to be the castle of Vlad the Impaler. Firstly, the Poyanari fortress near the town of Targovishti, the capital of medieval Wallachia. It was built in the 13th century and has not survived to this day. Those who wish can climb one and a half thousand steps and admire the ruins of the wall and the watchtower. Vlad Tepish lived here for a long time, and his wife Elizaveta committed suicide here. She threw herself from the tower upon learning of her husband's death. The news turned out to be false. The chroniclers claim that the cruel prince was shocked by the death of his wife, and this allowed later authors to write a million romantic stories. In the second castle, Vlad spent the night only a couple of times. But it is very likely that it is he who is described in Stoker's book. Bran Castle is located 30 kilometers from Brasov and looks exactly as Stoker described. Moreover, this is the only castle in Romania that fits the description. The fate of the castle was not easy. It changed hands many times. According to legend, Vlad himself was once tortured in a local prison. Now Bran belongs to the descendants of the Romanian royal dynasty. The communists, having come to power, confiscated absolutely everything from the monarchs. But the owners restored the interiors, so Dracula fans could admire medieval furniture, weapons and even treasures. By the way, 
The owners are proud to own a vampire castle. Next to it is the Labyrinth of Horrors, and dry red wine, Vampire, is sold. In addition to these two, the Korvanov Castle, where Vlad was held captive for seven years, and the Orava Castle, located in Slovakia in general, where the famous film adaptation of Dracula, Nosferatu, a symphony of horror, were filmed, claim the title of Dracula's residence. The prototype book castle is also called Slane's Castle in Scotland, where Stoker visited a couple of years before writing the novel. The life of Vlad Tepish is fascinating, but we are more interested in what happened to him after his death. How he died and what became of his body is not known for certain. If there is still a couple of historical evidence about the death of Dracula, then in search of the grave they rely on legends. And the ruler has at least two graves. Firstly, in the Snagov Monastery, 40 kilometers from Bucharest. Folk tradition speaks in favor of this option, but archaeological research has been carried out here as well. In the 30s. In the vestibule of the Church of the Annunciation of the Most Holy Theotokos, they found the skeleton of a man in rich clothes and a crown. True, according to legend, Dracula was cut off his head, and taken to Istanbul, but this body has a head. According to the second version, Vlad was buried in the Kamana Monastery, also not far from Bucharest. This version belongs to Romanian scientist Konstantin Rezakovici. He claims that Dracula was buried in an unmarked and unadorned grave. During the excavations of the Komen Monastery, founded by Dracula, yes, during his lifetime the vampire was a fanatical Orthodox Christian and donated huge sums to the church. A fragment of a burned-out wooden church of the 15th century was found and the nameless grave is exactly where the founder of the monastery was supposed to be buried. No princely symbols were found in the grave, but a headless skeleton lay. However, this is all nonsense. We know that Count Dracula didn't die at all. The Romanians trade in the memory of the ghoul count right and left. But they do not forget about the historical Vlad, who not only executed the objectionable, but also fought for the liberation of Romania from the Turkish yoke built churches, donated to monasteries and did charitable work. In total, there are at least seven monuments to the Wallachian ruler in Romania. But the fictitious count did not honor the monument. But let's go through the places associated exclusively with the fictional Dracula from the novel. They are also quite real, and there is also something to see. You still have to start from Transylvania. From the Tihutsa Pass, where the book Vampire lived. Not a single medieval castle has been preserved there but a hotel with the predictable name Castel Dracula has been built. The places around are incredibly beautiful, and in winter you can go skiing. Rooms at the hotel are inexpensive. Suites are named after the heroes of the novel and decorated in the Gothic style. There is a bust of Bram Stoker in the garden, in general, happiness for the fan. The hotel hosts weddings, conferences and parties, especially on Halloween, and there is another tomb of Count Dracula in the basement. Maybe real? If country living isn't for you, there's another hotel dedicated to vampires in the charming medieval town of Bystri. It was there, at the Golden Crown Hotel, that Jonathan Harker stayed when he arrived in Transylvania. Unfortunately, that old-fashioned hotel has not been preserved, or did not exist. And now its place is occupied by the modern hotel Coroana de Aur. It is interesting because, in addition to the usual restaurant, there is Jonathan Harker's salon, which still serves the same dishes that the hero ate in the 19th century. Needless to say, he praised them very much. Let's leave Transylvania and move to England, where most of Dracula takes place. The Earl has landed at Whitby, and that's where we'll start. Whitby Port is located at the mouth of the River Esk on the east coast of North Yorkshire. The city, then an abbey, was founded in the 7th century by St. Hilda. By the time Bram Stoker arrived in Whitby, only picturesque ruins remained of the abbey, and the city itself was associated with the culture of Victorian thanatophiles, lovers of romantic death. It was after visiting this romantic place that Bram Stoker began to write a novel and gave the name of his hero here, before that he was simply called, the Vampire Count. So Whitby could be considered the birthplace of Dracula. The events of the three chapters of the novel take place here, and it was here that the Earl bid his first English victim, Lucy. The city currently hosts many tours of Dracula, from Bram Stoker's memorial pew in the house where the writer stayed, to St. Mary's Church, where Dracula bit Lucy. There is also a small Dracula museum in Whitby. Designed in the spirit of the film by Francis Ford Coppola. From Whitby, 
Dracula moved to London, where most of the novel takes place. We know two of his London addresses, in these houses he kept sarcophagi brought from Transylvania. These were 347 Piccadilly Street. A few steps from a large, newly built white church, let's go to Highgate Cemetery. Researchers agree that this is exactly what is described as Kingstead Cemetery, where the vampire turned Lucy is buried. This is one of the most fashionable cemeteries of the Victorian era. With many Gothic graves and statues, Karl Marx, George Eliot, Douglas Adams, and many other celebrities are buried here. But what is important to us is that Highgate is considered the most mystical cemetery in London. The last vampire rose from the coffin there in 1982, at least it was talked about a lot. And thanks to the Gothic mausoleums and tombstones, this cemetery is often filmed in horror films, including a pairing with Dracula. Unlike many other stories, Dracula takes place in very specific cities, on specific streets. It is not surprising that over time, attractions and museums for tourists appear on them. Someone may be outraged by how the owners of these places profit from fiction and legends. But if you think about it, is it bad? Revived places from books and films make our world a little more mysterious, mystical, and magical.